Today I'm talking about this toy record maker from Japan. This video took weeks to make, so I'm super excited about it. It's from a company called Gaken. It's an incredible piece of equipment, even though it's sold and billed as a toy, a lot can be done with it. And today I'm going to talk about what kind of records I've been able to cut with this thing. To give a bit of background, Teenage Engineering collaborated with this Japanese company to produce a toy record maker, but it appears to be discontinued. I have been researching record cutting for a few years now, so this has been a fascinating process, and I thought that getting this toy record maker would be an accessible way to try something new, to try a new machine. Let's start with the inputs and outputs. This is USB powered. You can use an outlet or whatever you want. I've seen a portable battery pack recommended. It also has an audio in and an audio out. They're both 3.5. It has a volume knob, which you can use to adjust when playing back or when and recording. It has a speed adjustment. It records at 33 and 45 RPM. And then over here, you can switch between recording and playing back. It has a playback head as well as a recorder head. Every time you start recording, you have to slide it back right this way. And you have to make sure that this catches so that when you start recording, it will slide all the way down and make its way from the outer side of the disc to the inner part of the disc. It comes disassembled, so you have to assemble it yourself. I know this can be quite a challenge and it definitely was for me. I was fortunate that my dad helped me assemble it. Thanks, dad. I also had some problems with it where the motor that it came with was actually broken, but I'll talk about that a little later. It also comes with an instruction booklet. It's totally in Japanese, which I don't think is a problem, especially if you're using something like Google Translate. I used Google Translate throughout the process and I felt like it did a good job. It can be confusing at times. All the instructions are illustrated. There are no photographs, but there are also a lot of online resources at this point, one of which is the Secret Society of Lathe Trolls. There are lots of YouTube videos and other blog posts and Reddit posts that are a great resource if you're having trouble when assembling this. And as a side note, I want to say that this booklet also has a lot of great articles on how record cutting works the physics of it, how the audio file is translated into physical movement, and it actually also has a whole two pages on helping you correct any mistakes you have, such as bad EQ, something that I encountered, or if you want to make the human voice more prominent over here, how would you EQ that? I had several problems. The first one was pretty difficult to overcome. My recorder shipped with a broken motor, Fortunately, my dad was able to figure it out. After we figured this out, I just ordered a replacement on Amazon. I think it was around $15, so it wasn't too bad and took a few days to ship. I don't have any soldering experience, so this was my first soldering project. It wasn't hard at all. It didn't take me long. I think it took me longer trying to be neat versus actually doing what I needed to do. Another thing that was causing me a lot of problems was this screw right here and it adjusts how far the recorder head descends so in this position fully unscrewed it lets the recorder head come down completely i don't know if you can see to the disc but if you screw it in right here it does not descend completely there we go. So it's really difficult to find the correct position. I found that the actual turntable part of my recorder is warped. So when I was trying to adjust that screw, the recorder head kept bouncing up and down or not reaching the disc. And I realized that fully unscrewing it was actually the best way for me to record because then the recorder head would follow the unevenness of the turntable and the disc and it was able to record fine. The last problem that I had was fully self-created as I don't really know anything about audio engineering I did not EQ my track that I recorded in true classical music fashion I was playing
playing with a lot of dynamics. I really wanted to see what I could do with this thing. And so I realized that when I was playing very loudly, this was causing the needle to skip. I needed to find a solution and to EQ my tracks. And I will talk about this a little later in the improvements section. As I said, the Secret Society of Lathe Trolls is an incredible resource and I'm going to put a link to the particular thread that I found useful below in the description, as well as links to any other resources that I mentioned. Some advice that I used from there was number one, embossing not cutting basically you turn the recording needle around by 180 degrees so that it is using the other side and you are embossing the blank instead of cutting it this way the needle serves you longer which is an upside because i haven't found a place where i can actually buy replacement needles at this point another tip from that thread that i found incredibly useful was actually half speed mastering half speed mastering means taking an audio file using something like audacity to slow it down to 33 rpm cutting it at 33 rpm and then playing it back at 78 rpm and i found that this drastically improved the quality of my cuts there were a few other tips in there that i did not find as useful one of them was using a heat lamp to heat up the blank so that hypothetically it makes the plastic more malleable and softer so that the cut is smoother and higher quality. I found that I was overly enthusiastic with using the heat lamp and the disc ended up warping instead. I may come back to trying that out, but currently that's not something that helped me achieve better quality. A useful tip that I found was using something like turpentine on the surface of the disc right before embossing it. I found that improved the audio quality slightly. Let's talk a bit about EQ. So in the magazine that comes with the recorder, they actually recommend that you cut anything below 100 hertz and above 10 kilohertz. Teenage Engineering still have an online tool that helps you master your track. Even though they discontinued the physical recorder, it has three different flavors. There's a pop, a warm, and a wrap filter, and I found the warm one to be the best for what I was doing. Throughout this whole process, I was cutting many records i think i cut around 10 with different modifications and versions and after mastering i finally saw that the needle stopped skipping let's do a recording comparison i will play a digital recording of what i played and then i will play a vinyl version feel free to skip between the two as you please you can also use the chapters in the video description to navigate between all the different sections I would love to hear what you think about this. I think it came out pretty well. Obviously there are faults, especially a big one is that my record player cannot play the full recording because this is a five inch disc instead of a seven inch one.
really wanted to try was recording live onto a record and after all of this experimenting I decided that I could actually try and do this. I used a mixer, a Yamaha MG10XU. I cut everything below 100 hertz and then everything above 10 kilohertz. This was an improvisation and I cut at 33 RPM. I was a little nervous and I think I played too soft. I didn't want to make the needle skip and ruin the whole record. In retrospect, I think I should have played louder. And here again, I will include the digital recording and then a recording of the record as it was playing. You will hear that a lot of the higher notes disappear, but I think the sound comes through pretty well and I'm definitely going to experiment more with this setup. And by the way, if you want this record for yourself, comment below, I'll choose a random person and I'll ship it to you.
what am I gonna do next? I have a few ideas. I've seen some people modify this record cutter to cut seven inch records and I think that's really cool. I also want to try automating the lead in and lead out because right now it's really finicky. You have to do everything by hand and it's really easy to do it wrong and basically ruin your needle. I'm interested in trying to 3D print a pet G disc. I've seen people talk about it but I haven't seen anyone actually do it so I wonder if my bamboo lab X1C would be able to iron the surface smooth enough that I could cut a record from it. And finally, I'm really interested in building my own record cutter from scratch. I've seen several different resources on this topic. There were a few people on the Secret Society of Lathe Trolls that talk about 3D printing parts, and I think that sounds doable. I've also seen a few very old magazines and books that talk about building record cutters. So that's something I plan on working in the future. If all of this sounds exciting to you, give this video a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I can't wait to share my next experiment with you.